how are you? And welcome along to the Rusha and Shaban show. Minus my gal Demru. She's not here. I've put her light on just you can see it there in the top corner for effect because she brings in the money. But it's sad, it's lonely. I miss her. I haven't seen her in ages. But it's good news because she's at camp and we'll talk more about the upcoming international fixtures in just a minute. Before we go any further, you lovely returning viewers who haven't already subscribed, please hit that red button for me. I'd be so grateful. I think it's red. It is red, isn't it? Subscribe button is red. Um, but it would be nice to have you on board as a subscriber to the channel. Um but wow, I've been off the grid on what what, what was the most interesting Conti Cup of them all. Um, and I just wanted to take a minute before the kids return from the farm with their nana to to reflect on what was a, a really incredible weekend for the game. Of course, Arsenal winning the competition back to back in two finals in a row against Chelsea in the Conti Cup to win it again is a huge congratulations to Arsenal women. What unfolded during the game with Frida Manham um, was just awful. And thankfully, she's good and okay. And what happened with Emma Hayes and Jonas Cedeval is something that is still kind of going around at the minute. A lot of people really kind of getting into this. I don't know if it's, if it's where I work, where, or because I... I want equality in women's football and I know it's not going to be equal ac across the board. I'm not looking for equal wages. Um, but you do want stories like this to be... How do you put it? Stories like this in women's football have brought more eyes to the sport for the right or wrong reasons, whatever it may be. But this one with Emma Hayes and Jonas Cedeval was uh, certainly a little bit spicy, wasn't it? So if you have been under a rock, I mean, I literally was under a rock in Northern Ireland for Easter and had the game on a live stream, but the Wi-Fi was so poor, it just kept dropping out, which was okay because I was on a holiday and switching off. But um, I did see the push at the end and I thought, oh, what the, what the was that? Like I was so taken aback by it. What we can do is reflect to uh, this time last year when Arsenal won the Conti Cup in that final against Chelsea. And Emma Hayes said something along the lines of Arsenal looked like a team who had to win something. You know, we're a team who's won a lot and they looked like a team who had to win something. It was something along those lines. Don't completely quote me on that. Excuse me. Oh, wait, where the fuck is summer, by the way? What is this weather about? Um, however... I think Jonas Cedeval is a passionate guy. To call him or label him with male aggression on the touchline, I think, was unfair and untrue of Emma Hayes. And I think Jonas Cedeval almost hit the nail on the head by saying that it was irresponsible of Emma Hayes to call her that. But also, I think she's a sore loser. She wants to win. She's the biggest winner in women's football in this country, in this league. And to be defeated by Arsenal when really Chelsea have been the better team all season is going to hurt. So you're going to find ways to, to lash out. But to physically lash out at Jonas Cedeval was the bit that really disappointed me. And disappoint is one of those words that if you disappoint someone... It's the one you always remember, isn't it? And and I think it's hard for Emma Hayes to do so, but I feel that she's kind of let herself down in that situation because he's not, he would never in his wildest dreams ever think about doing that if Emma Hayes was losing her marbles on the touchline like he was. It was to do with the, <clears throat> the second ball. Chelsea only wants to play with one. Towards the end of the game, Erin Cuthbert took the second ball. Jonas was saying... Oh, it suits you. Something along the lines of it suits you now. You're losing the game. You want to play the second ball. Erin Cuthbert then clearly kind of goes up to Jonas, Edeval. She says something to him. Wouldn't want to bump into Erin Cuthbert in a dark alley because she'd probably batter me. Um, well, I don't know if she would, but, you know, uh, she, you know, she can handle herself. Um, and Jonas Edeval shouts back at her. 
this isn't something that we've not seen from Jonas Edeval before. Actually, maybe it's an Arsenal thing. Maybe it's a, it's it's in the it's in the the vibe there because actually Mikel Arteta gets criticised for it too. Um, but I thought it was wrong for her to push him. You know, I do. I think managers can get frustrated and get heated and show their passion and their want to win in very different ways. What he did and his behaviour on the touchline wasn't something that we haven't seen before. I think to push him at full time or shove him, whatever you want to call it, put hands on him and and almost show aggression and then call him or label him with male aggression was disappointing, very disappointing and not right. It wasn't right. Now, there's a lot going around today online about should Emma Hayes apologise? Should she be getting a touchline ban? Um, which is, a, I think, a fair conversation to have. Now, I don't know the ins and outs. Has she spoken to Jonas Edeval post-match? You know, he was very calm in his assessment after the game. Then again, you've won and you've lost. You know, it's two very different mindsets. Will we hear more about this? I think it will be very interesting um, to see. I think there's a lot of respect for both managers. But there's also been... A little bit of beef from the beginning, hasn't there? I mean, you go back to when Chelsea won the league, when Jonas Edevala joined Arsenal and Aaron Cuthbert and Millie Bright celebrating on their knees. When you think back to Jonas's first game against Chelsea at the Emirates, when he got down on his knees and did that celebration. Remember when Beth scored the third goal? I think they beat them 3-1 that, that day at the Emirates. <clears throat> they were clearly making fun of Jonas in that instance. Um the black cat stuff when he said he was superstitious and he saw the black cat at the training ground and he had a feeling he was going to win and then Emma Hayes won the other game after and she said she was purring. That was a bit shady too. Um, so they do go back and forth, but I think to see physical physical ways, it happens with the players all the time, but when you see it with managers in the men's game and it's two, two men, like fairly recently, Antonio Conte and Thomas Tuchel. Yeah, it was when, he, when Conte was at Spurs. And Thomas Tuchel was at Chelsea. They kind of went at it at full time and was like pulling and shoving. And I'm like, oh my God, get the popcorn. But when I saw it from Emma Hayes towards Jonas Edeval, I was shocked. And you bet your bottom dollar there'd be so much uproar if that was the other way around. It just would not be tolerated. It would be completely disgraceful. So I don't expect it to be any other way, really. I don't think it was right. Um, anyway, the saga rumbles on. Like I say, my girly Roosh isn't here. She's just been texting, actually. Um, she's in camp and she'd sent us a picture. Well, it's on social media. She'd put it on her Instagram story. That really cute one of her and Kenza. Is that like the cutest picture ever? I love that picture. Um, good old pals. Because, of course, they've got France on Friday now. Also on Friday, the Lionesses play at Wembley. So I'm going to try and do both of these games. Lionesses, of course, have Sweden. So I'm trying to think, watch along this Friday. If you're game and if you'll join me, then let's do a double watch along. So we'll start with the England game. That's at eight o'clock. And then Ireland, I want to say something weird, like 10 past nine on Friday night. That's quite late, isn't it? It's well past Russia's bedtime. Is it 10 past nine? Shall I just double check that? Yeah, 10 past nine, 5th of April. France v Republic of Ireland. Um, so yeah, that's that's all coming up this week. So should we do a watch along this Friday? Yes, I think we should, because I thoroughly enjoy them. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, there's a lot of focus on, of course, the Lionesses. Leah Williamson being ready and returning to the squad. But I think this group of death will be so interesting in terms of qualification. So the top two in the group will get space and the bottom two are guaranteed, guaranteed a playoff. So I'll be at Ireland, I would say are the weaker side um, in, in this group. I do think it's going to be interesting. They've brought in some, say, different players. The likes of Anna Patton, I think, in, in defence will be interesting. Um, what do you think of that too? I mean, what do you think of Patsy playing for 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 uh, Ireland? I mean, she's a great addition to the squad. Um, and that was kind of big news when that happened. Noni Fahey. Um, which is a, which is a shame because Neve is just a great a great leader really of that Ireland squad, um, and also she's a senior player too. Uh, so we will look ahead to that and probably do those watch alongs on Friday. I might be on my own, so I'm going to need you with me. But um, feel free to wade in in the comments your thoughts on 
the Emma Hayes Jonasy Deval situation and where does it go from here? It's certainly not quietened down and and, and like quieted quietened down. And like I mentioned earlier, I don't know if it's where I work where I, I I, I want for equality in women's football. I want more eyes in the sport. And then people are saying, you know, oh, well, you're not talking about Emma Hayes now when this happened on the weekend. I definitely am. Definitely am. And, you know, it was it happened on Sunday and it was really big news. And it still is going on. So I wonder if there will be an apology, maybe perhaps from Emma Hayes' side. I wonder if there will be a touchline ban. Um, or is this something that will just kind of go away? Um, and maybe won't, hopefully won't happen again. But um, as we wrap up, fair play to Arsenal, getting the silverware that they needed this season. Will this spur them on to go on and climb the table? Um, with something like four games to go, they've got a lot of work to do. Chelsea, I think, excuse me, would still be my favourites to win the league. And the Champions League is just around the corner. Of course, they've got Barcelona. The second leg is going to be at Stamford Bridge on the 27th of April. That's Jamie's 40th birthday. I'm working at it for Dazone. I can't wait. And he's going to come with me too. And I'm like, gosh, if they can get past Barcelona and make it to a final, how mental will that be? What do you think Chelsea's chances are in this competition to knowing that they've got the beasts and the current champions of Barcelona in the semi-finals. You can have your say. Let me know in the comments. And I will be back with you Friday for a watch along. And if you haven't already, please like, please subscribe. And I will see you very, very soon. Be good. Bye. <laughs>